Hi, I'm Ryan Vineyard. I'd like to start by thanking O'Reilly and the conference organizers for this great opportunity to talk about open source. It gives me an opportunity to talk about open hardware, the other side of things. Specifically, I'd like to address open manufacturing and how do we bring open hardware beyond 3D printing into the manufacturing space. First, I'd like to start out with my background. I started out at Stanford. I originally thought I was going to be a programming computer science major, like many of you. I had my first all-night debug session. It was no good. I realized that I needed hardware, physical objects in front of me, in order to be at my best. So I ended up majoring in mechanical engineering product design. I went through a few startups around the Bay Area and uh, working in power electronics, electric vehicles. And a common theme I saw was a real gap between making one prototype and the manufacturing ramp. That's experience that I draw on every day as an engineering advisor at Highway 1, a hardware incubator in San Francisco. So what is open hardware, you ask? It's not a topic we talk a lot about here. Most open hardware that I see these days is really directed at the 3D printing space. It's essentially 3D printing parts to improve your 3D printer. I think we can move beyond that. There are other good examples out there. Arduino is one. People know of it as a great software ecosystem where you can prototype your early code. Even I can program Arduino. The only code I've written in the last decade was on an Arduino. But a lot of what people don't know is the hardware is open as well. You can take the, the reference designs there, build your own board from the native CAD files on the electrical side all the way up to something new. It's a great ecosystem, and I think there are more like that that will come to follow. An example I'd like to draw on for that, meet Jesse Vincent. Some of you know him. I think he's in this audience right now. He started in the open source software world. Um, you might know him because he was an early program manager on the Perl. He was also uh, developed open source projects in the K9 Mail client and Request Tracker. This is Jesse in the simpler times, hanging out in pools, wearing tiny hats. Then he decided to develop some hardware. That's where I met him. They came into our incubator, and they'd already embraced an open development process. Jesse and his wife, Kaya, decided to develop keyboards to solve the problems that many of us have with repetitive strain injuries. They'd already embraced this, going through many prototypes, and being public about how they were developing. But something that they saw is going from open source software to the hardware community, there just wasn't that support network there. There wasn't the openness. It was a really closed system, especially when you get to the gulf between prototyping and manufacturing. They ended up with a beautiful keyboard at the end. It was in the hardware showcase here. And I encourage you all to go check out their website, keyboard.io. But they're now at a point where they need to ramp that to manufacturing. They're taking an open approach releasing their logic board, which is a few reference designs that are already out there, into the open hardware ecosystem to help future people going down the same path. So after learning a bit from them about open source and how we apply that to the open hardware world, it got me thinking, what is open hardware? Is it hardware made with open source software? It's a good start, but that's not really what I'm talking about. Hardware project developed publicly? I applaud that, but it's not really getting to the core. What I mean by open hardware is stuff where you can compile, recompile the firmware, own it, make it your own, make a new extension. More importantly, on the mechanical electrical side, I can redesign it. I'm talking about the native CAD files, not just the STL files in order to 3D print exactly what someone else has, but the native solid part files so you can edit it and make it your own. This already exists in the prototyping space. You can prototype your hardware and software on Arduino, you can go to Blender CAD and make your mechanical CAD. You can go to Thingiverse and get an open CAD file if you don't want to make your own. Print it on your rep wrap and then go to your local hackerspace tech shop to prototype it. So I, I really enjoy this ecosystem because it's made more people get into hardware. We're seeing more people at our hardware incubator, more people really enjoying that side of things that I've enjoyed for years. But the roadblock hits when you get to manufacturing. There's so much more documentation that's necessary for that. You need tooling CAD. I'm talking mainly about injection molding, the main way that we make plastics that are in all of our everyday devices. There's so much involved there. The CAD, the work instructions, the bill of materials, product required documents. It goes so far beyond. And there's really a blank ecosystem out there when you look at it. I see a huge opportunity there because manufacturing on the hardware side has even more benefits in some ways than the open source software. You already have the benefits of the open community, better knowledge base, and better products for us, but the other benefit I see is in sustainability. Why are, all, why are we all molding the same dowel pins, fasteners, and rivets um, when we're making the same standardized parts that we've all converged to? 
So there is a little bit of open tooling out there. Uh, I had to go to GrabCAD and link, leave Thingiverse to find this. For perspective, Thingiverse has over 9,000 hits for 3D printing, but only 60 hits for injection molding. There really isn't a lot of knowledge out there. So start with a coffee cup. Looks more like a measuring cup to me, but hey, call it what you will. So there's an open tool out there for it, but it has its limitations. They have the assembly files, but when you get into the guts, it's still STL files, step files, um, transfer files, not the native CAD you need to fully be open about your process. And even there, the injection molding tool that they show doesn't have the cooling channels and other things. You need to have a real tool. So there are other people out there doing this. Tesla thinks they're going open source. They got a lot of publicity for it. It's been great. What are they really talking about here? I think it's great movement for them because Tesla, in my mind, <clears throat> entered a market that was really difficult because of the manufacturing. It's really easy to make one of something. It's hard to make something that can be made. They were going up against an ecosystem in Detroit where only three people could manufacture. I know, I built one electric bus. We had trouble building more. <clears throat> so why are they doing this if they're not going fully open? I see a few main reasons. The electric charging network is huge for them. The picture on the left shows their current uh, supercharger grid. You can get coast to coast on their superchargers. The more electric vehicles out there, the more chargers, the more benefit, the more reason to buy a Tesla. They've also really put a lot of money into their Gigafactory, really coming in the back end, supplying all the batteries for, for um, the electric products that will follow theirs. But if we go back to the list, compile, design, manufacture, they're talking about this from a legal standpoint. Patents, they haven't even made clear how they're opening their patents, what, what will be the format of that. They're doing none of these things. They got some good press, but they got to really double down and open up. So what can you do from the software side of this community? I see a few opportunities. I mentioned a lot of softwares in the prototyping space. There's really a gulf when you get from mechanical and electrical CAD into the tooling things, the mold flow analysis, the other tools that us mechanical and electrical engineers need to make the best tooling, the best products, um, and the most efficient economies of scale for all of us. I also see the crowd in this room. You are the crowd in crowdfunding. Demand openness in the projects that you fund. Aside from that, build hardware. I know you can, you know you want to. Also, release your native CAD and open your tooling files when you do it. Thank you, I'm Ryan.